And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Tarek Braum. This is my YouTube video that did it the best. Y'all liked this deck and for good reason. I really liked it too. I love playing Starlet Seer decks. They're a lot of fun. And this one in particular was so much fun with Starlet Seer with gems, creating a ton of gems. We have our gift givers, our mentor of the stones, our shards of the mountain. I really like the shards of the mountain, filling our hands with gems. And then we get to play four, five, six gems after Shards of the Mountain and use Starlet Seers to really buff up the units in our deck. And of course, we're buffing up Brahms, buffing up Terex. Our deck just gets pretty buff. We have Hearthguard, Omenhawk. Um, yeah, we got a real buff deck here. Of course, Mentor buffing up stuff too. So let's go have some fun with Terex Brahm. We're going to go play this over in Ranked, of course, because it's Rank Up Sunday. We're going to go play five games, and we're going to see how we do, see if we can get a little closer to Master's rank. We are getting there over in Diamond 2 right now. Just had a 5-0 with Darius Thresh. That deck was looking quite good. Lux Leona is the deck of the day, I guess. We played against Lux Leona twice out of our five games earlier. Now we got another one against it. We'll mulligan the Shards of the Mountain to start with, and honestly, usually I'd be keeping Elixir of Iron, but besides single combat and Concerted Strike, this is probably not a deck that really has too much removal, and so I'll just go ahead and mulligan away the Elixir of Iron and kind of look for some more threats. So it looks like our, we have a very gem-happy hand. Very gem-happy hand. can give some gifts. The gift of gems. Ours is the one and there's a card that likes gems. Punish transgressions. We could play the gem on the gift giver and attack for two, but I'd rather just have the two three in. Probably playing defense. Probably. Yeah, we could play. We could play a little offense. Pill cascade would be kind of bad. Yay. Because of course we want the Starlet Seer alive by the time we start playing all these gems. We're just going to curve out. We'll play Mentor, then we'll play Braum. We can, hopefully, Mentor will survive at that point, and we will be able to support Braum. Sunlight guided, my brethren. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. Hopefully. Let us get going. There you go. Yeah, yeah, definitely update it. The dawn has arrived. With its light, the soul the sun will unite light. the heavens. Cool. Whee! Have you met my shield? Believe or burn. This is a pretty nice permanent buff to Brahms. Now Brahms is a 2 7. And we have four gems. To make Brahm. A 6-7, our next attack turn. Ooh, that Arbor of the Peak's gonna be nice. War is everlasting. I will shield my people as long as I draw breath. That's a long time. Uh Fortunately they're gonna kill my Starlets here, aren't they? I don't think it's worth just playing three gems on the Starlet Seer. I don't think. But I could be wrong. I think I'm supposed to just triple gem Starlet Seer. Okay. Absolutely. It's nice. So you got a donation deck using Sojourners. Let's 
to our friends in Rome. Good luck. Have fun. I think I just do this. Back, heretic. Looks like they got a tough decision. That was the problem of just going straight to combat, I guess, was Concerted Strike. I don't know really why it took them a half hour to figure that out, but... I will. Save my mana? No, I'll put that. See the Demacian border from here. <laughs> yep, Jack, we're gonna play Fizz Diana. Have a Labor Day. This is not the way. There we go. Never mind. Light the signal fires. Ooh, Shards of the Mountain. Protect us. Let's see. Beauty and life. I think I want to go have Mentor and Tarek together this turn. I am the bulwark against darkness. Sure, you're all shiny in the this game's not looking so good for us with just you know them having their champions out there, good blockers, that kind of stuff. Every gem you bestow reflects the beauty of our world. Each is made in your name, Protector. There's not doing very much over there. Nine mana. Nine mana, they're not doing anything. Sapphire, gem of our divine patron. Shatter them. Celestial power. Time to shine. Be brave. So my thinking here is like these will just both both be five health and tough, so neither of them will die to the five one. Because they'll be five health and tough. We are very close to leveling up our Taric. Five out of seven, very close. That is the problem with our deck. Whenever we played this deck last time, we didn't play against a single person playing the card Hush. Maybe I needed to play all three of my... Maybe I should just play the three gems on the Starlet Seer. I think, I think kind of going back at it... That turn five when they played their the warrior. I wish I would have played the. Um, wish I would have played the three gems on the Starlet Seer. The I think that was the play that I messed up.
Fill my hand with gems. So many gems. All right, they passed. I will end the round. Sorry, card. Arbor to the peak. All right, you're gone. Sapphire, gem of our divine patron. Obviously, they could have a hush, but hopefully not. They're both 11 power. These gems grant a wearer harmony. Face my. <clears throat> All right, GG's. I would be very happy if this card, if they changed this card to just say silence a unit this round, and then that was the end of the card, if it did not say create a fleeting hush in hand. I would be very happy with that. So Trundle, Trindamir, do I want to keep Zenith Blade? I kind of do. Zenith Blade with that Overwhelm. Does feel like that may be uh, something that could be necessary here. The journey is difficult. Things will protect you. No, that would not be a worse Purify because it hits champions. Purify does not hit champions. That's a very, very big deal. My it would still be a better purify because of that. Thought me smell something. Mm. Mm. Now I should have taken out that other Zenith Blade. Yeah, now I should have been didn't keep that. Now we go. Create two copies max. They don't. That's not really a thing that happen like there's not there's not cards that um do that in rune terra right like they just don't really use that kind of language of like you know something that could be infinite that they say stop after one iteration or two iterations or three iterations like that's not you know even like that's just not something like in language wise that they really ever use Alright, Clutch Elixir of Iron. Gem up this Braum. Now Braum's a 3-7. Three 3-7s seven. Three are good against 4-3s. Well, Braum's still going to be a permanent 3-7. And we'll be able to have these gems for after Starlet Seer. No, I don't think there are any balance patches this week, no. I believe it's the the next week. August 15th, whenever they announce it. August 16th, when it's implemented. The Quick Pass. Definitely think about Avalanche. Definitely think about Avalanche. So I, I'm going to play Zenith Blade. I know it won't draw. It won't draw something right now, but we are we already have another Zenith Blade in hand. So I'm playing it kind of after the Starlet Seer. <clears throat> Get that buff. Play it again. Are they going to have Vengeance? I sure hope not. I sure hope not. They say these were from the Protector himself. This will be a good winter. Blessed by snow and stars. 
Good luck. Have fun. We still kind of have the pale cascade to protect it. Ruination. Um, do I need to draw? I guess we don't have to draw one right now. But still, we buffed up something. Plus three, plus three. Omenok will make it plus four, plus four. So they're at, they have two more cards than I do. But my Pale Cascade can replace itself. The Zenith Blade will replace itself. No! Never mind, the Zenith Blade will not replace itself. Uh Ouch. We're not going to be beholding another celestial card. Next turn we'd have eight mana. So we have eight plus the mana from star shaping. Many tribes under one banner. We'll buff everything else up. I'm just gonna challenge the ice pillar and kill it, but it, it gains them eight life, I suppose. Zenith Blade again. Today we fight as one. <laughs> one mana arbor to the peak. Bigger than that trundle. All right, so now uh, we have nine mana. Not quite enough for Living Legends. <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't play that one mana 8-8 eight eight so that we could play Living Legends, maybe. Sure, you do whatever you want, Ledros. What do we got? Uh, obliterate enemies with three or less power. The Scourge, the Destroyer, the Great Beyond. So we have two Destroyers, one Great Beyond. Great Beyond costs nine. Yuck. Let's play this thing. I think they'll have another Ruination. Tusk Rider? No, I don't. No, I don't have any Tusk Rider. I think I want to save this thing. Right? Wait. No, I don't want to. Sure hope they don't have another ruination. My blade grows restless. <laughs> Our deck is so buff. Thirty six overwhelm damage. Stand together. <laughs> you, you can have a one one block. And there we go. 
Do you think they had ruination? I definitely don't think they had ruination. I don't know why. Like, they would absolutely play ruination if they had it. Oh, Leona, Aurelian Soul, Dragon, Control deck. Awesome. Thanks for that donation deck. Oh, hey, look. We are playing against Leona Targaryen. We'll get rid of Hush and Arbiter. Keep the Mentor. There we go. Get our early stuff going. We're going to go Omen Hawk turn one. I like getting that uh, two plus one plus ones in my deck immediately. They're out there. I'll spot them. Sweet. They could have had Shield Bear. I was kind of expecting Shield Bear with no one drop, you know, because they're a, a Daybreak tech. So I was kind of expecting Shield Bear on turn two, but I still thought it was worth it to play the uh, Avaros and Sentry. Speak, I say. Um, just in case, because we were only missing out on one point of damage if I would have gone straight to attacks. Don't worry. I am here. Hopefully no Leona. No, let's just go Tarek. We'll just go Tarek 5-7. Basically attacking with the sentry there to get another support going for leveling up Tarek. You know, their, their removal, they're going to have... Um, yeah, happy to hear. Alright, so we're at two. Three, four, five. We can have a lot of gems. We have the Blessing of Targon. Okay, let's see. You get in there. Alright, so sorry I didn't buff you up, Omen Hawk, with the Starless here. Alright, so we go. Sapphire, gem of our divine patron. One. Two. This would be a good winter. Man, I'm just one mana short. So how is this gonna work if Blessed by Snow and Stars? This is at five out of seven. Will this be indestructible? Will my Starless Seer also be indestructible? I don't think it will. So I think this happens first. We're gonna see, but I don't think they are can't take damage or di or die. No, they aren't. Okay, but good to know. That's I wanted to kind of do that for science. So with Tarek at six out of seven, and then, um, and then whenever Tarek's at six out of seven and uh, does that. It's not, um, they don't get the can't take damage or die thing. Good to know. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I'm pretty sure they're dead. Pretty sure they're dead. They're just... Well, I guess we'll see how many blockers they get. I guess that they're able to keep getting blockers out. Maybe not. With their three mana.
I wanted to go Shards of the Mountain this turn. But I guess Shards of the Mountain is not the play, so maybe they're not dead. Maybe they're not dead. Let's just pass. Because Shards of the Mountain does mean that, that my top card just gets burned. Because we'll be... Uh, you won't have any mana. Our hand will be filled. We'd have seven mana, so then we could play seven gems on, like, my Omen Hawk and make Omen Hawk, like, eight power, for example. Or, you know, just kind of split it up with all of these. They'd have three blockers. We could, you know, definitely make this enough. Okay, nope, they had more blockers, so... Um, I thought with them only having three mana that we'd be able to kill them, but they had two blockers with that three mana. All right, so we are going to play... Gift giver, get another gem. Each is made in your name, protector. Okay. These gems grant a wearer harmony. Snow and stars. No, these eyes see all. Remember my words. Never submit. Oh, an auspicious. Basically, I want to make it so my mentor of the stones can't, you know, so my mentor of the stones can't die. Um. And then my Mentor of the Stones pumps up the Starlet Seer. Open your eyes. And the Starlet Seer has eight health. This has eleven health. Can I paint you? Yes, yeah, so they're not they're not killing either of those by blocking them. Four, and then they get a free kill here, but of course I just kinda need another spot anyway. So they get a free kill. Why do people have to have that card? The only card in the whole format. <laughs> that card is just so broken. Both of our losses just because of Hush. That card is just broken. I was thinking that maybe we we're going to actually defeat Double Cosmic Inspiration. Which Double Cosmic Inspiration, of course, is insane. But that's, that's kind of how good our deck is, is that we are actually going to be able to defeat Double Cosmic Inspiration. But we can't defeat Hush. It's the one card out of the... I don't know. What do we have, like 600 or whatever? in Legends of Runeterra. One card that we can't beat. We beat everything else. Safeguard our homes. I don't really want my Mentor of the Stones to trade with a Spiderling. Especially when we have these things in play. Is that weird? Alright, play your deck, not Wednesday. So we just traded 
the the mentor for single combat. And I'd much rather you know I'd much rather trade my card with single combat than trade it with Spiderling. Right? Like trading with Spiderling is very meh. Many tribes under one banner. I wanna go home. Justice will be served. <clears throat> so my six six is better than bigger than their five five. And I think that story will continue to be true. The War Mother will unite us all. Six six is still bigger than the five five. Hopefully they run out of single combats. Two single combats down. Really hope they don't have another. Really hope they don't have another. Yay. Well, I mean, I guess they could still have single combat. Okay, let's see. Seven mana. So I want to play Zenith Blade as my first card, but then, of course, they could respond to Zenith Blade with single combat. But then I'd have, what, three... Three's not not enough. So obviously, I want to play gems first to heal, but then then I don't get the extra card with Zenith Blade. I guess we just don't get the extra card with Zenith Blade. That's just how it's going to be. That's just the way it is. So we need to heal. Lost in reflection. Because I also need this to be the last card so that we copy, you know, because it's the last thing that we played, so we get to copy this. No place for the kind. Our banner will lead the way. Unyielding. Never submit. There is nowhere left to go but up. Alright, they're both overwhelmed. They don't have the can't take damage or die thing. Stay back. If I would have played, you know, Gem Elixir of Iron also before attacking, then they would have the can't take damage or die claws. Admire me later. Okay. I think we're doing pretty good. Throw an Avaros and Hearthguard in front of the Undying. Every gem you bestow reflects the beauty of our world. Getting all these ephemerals out there. Look out for reavers. I also just don't have to. Go to nine. That's fine. Could I could use the star shaping to heal Taric and then and you know double cast that. Uh, I'm not gonna have a celestial card. Hmm. 
Okay. I guess I should have played around that card. Should have played that gift giver. Um. Well, it's pretty good. Give me a unit. Alright, you're gonna have to do, Gift Giver. The journey is difficult. Things will protect you. You could be so much more. I am truly honored, Protector. You honor me with every blessing you give. That's a play invoke. Good, not a summon invoke. Is it the boosters? Who knows? So Braum with Tarek is a little awkward because um, if Tarek supports Braum, then it's, uh, the support ally can't take damage. So Braum's not going to survive damage, because Braum can't take damage. So I actually want to support over here. Oh, because I, obviously we want Braum to take damage. And... I guess. This is fun, yes? I guess I want them to block with the three five and the four three. Never submit. I too serve. I join them. But of course, Brom is awesome against. The Undying, how it can just sit there back and block for me. Can't really afford them to have another Ruination. Just can't really afford that. Et Lao, resubbing five awesome months now. Thank you, Et Lao. Thanks for keeping that sub going. I really appreciate that. All right, we're gonna block both of these. Whoa, Shermie with the huge, huge raid. That is amazing. Welcome, welcome everybody. We are playing some Tarek Braum currently on our Rank Up Sunday stream. We are trying to hold off against the Undying. They did Ruination us a little bit ago, but we are rebuilding. All right, no Ruination here. If I go Living Legends, three, six, we'll only look at four cards. But those four cards are probably going to be pretty great. Um, yeah. The Welcome Shermies, there we go. Uh, let's see, so we're going to, yeah, let's go in Living Legends, let's have some fun. Let's see what we get, we get four cards. The Traveler. Oh man, Cosmic Inspiration. Yes, please. All right, we're gonna have Cosmic Inspiration. That's a good one to start with. That's not gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna just use Elixir of Iron, so I have five extra mana so I can go Traveler and Equinox. So Equinox silencing a follower. If we do it on the Undying, that does mean the Undying will be able to block Ugh. Stop. Six. I can go double Pale Cascade and that kills their Radiant Guardian also. That's actually probably worth it. Alright, sorry Equinox and Traveler. Ooh, that's a good card. That is a great card. against the Undying. Both of our losses were to that card, were to the card Hush. Um, uh, 
Okay, from Mog to Shermie. So sweet. Everybody coming over from Mogwai first. And over Shermie over here. Welcome, everybody. So, yeah, we did have two losses. Both of them were to Hush of, like, us attacking with huge Terex and stuff. Hush is pretty mean. Um, we're going to silence. I guess we just silence this thing. So they get a 2-2 they can block. I suppose that's what we do. All right, and round. Oh man, I love me some Starless here. Just gotta worry about another Ruination. Right. Gotta be worried about another Ruination. Alright, so we'll start with the Zenith Blade because the Daybreak we get to draw another one. Then even if they do have Ruination, then we'll be going back with Starless here and Zenith Blade. Okay, that probably means they do not have Ruination. That would be my guess. But maybe they're just getting me. Blessed by snow and stars. They say these were from the protector himself. Okay. Let's get these Starlet Seer pumps going. And finally, pump this up. And then if it's suddenly second ruination after this, <laughs> I was going to say. And Tarek will give the Starlet Seer plus one plus one and overwhelm also. So everything's got overwhelm. So we're looking at 16, 21, 28 overwhelm damage. GG's. Uh, yeah, this is our Rank Up Sunday stream. Those of you all that are newer to the channel, we are going to be playing five games with four different decks. That's what I do on my normal schedule, but for Rank Up Sunday, we basically just play good decks that we have had success with throughout the week. All four of these decks we did really well with this week. Um, earlier when we played Tarek Braum... We were 4-1. and one. We didn't play against a Hush deck. We got out aggroed one time and won the rest of our games. Alright, thanks, thanks, Nanyu. I'll write that down. May, may need some Sun Burst. I'm going to keep all of these. We'll keep Zenith Blade to go along with the Taric. With that Overwhelm. This looks pretty good. It's always the awkward thing of like, if we don't play anything on turn three and save the spell mana on turn three, then turn four we play Taric and then we Zenith Blade Taric. Of course, that means our Zenith Blade was the second card that we played, and therefore we would not get the Daybreak bonus. So that part's always a little awkward. Yeah, hush against all these buffs. Because that's, that's our deck. We're, we're buffing. And so if they have Hush against our buffs, we sad. I think that's all I'm doing this turn. And then passing... Arbiter of the Peak. You'll fight or you'll swim. So far today, we've I think that's the second Petty Officer that we've played against, and both times have been Fleet Feather Trekker. So. We don't really have to worry about trying to stop Plunder, because they're going to be dealing damage to us with the Prowling Cutthroat anyway. So I don't need to try too hard at stopping uh, Plunder, but I do want to just stop some damage. I know I could have Starlet Seer block an Elixir of Iron, but I would rather just save Elixir of Iron. You honor me with every blessing you give.
That could be a cool card. We we could star shaping to heal Tar Tarek and then copy star shaping. That's the cool part about star shaping. Heal the next thing and invoke twice. That is a really cool part of those two. Let's shatter them. Maybe I want to give it to this one too. Turn that thing into a 2-4. Yeah, let's do that. Never submit. Oh, an auspicious season. <laughs> wow, that works like that? We get to just draw again from Zenith Blade? I guess because we drew the first time? I don't think I've ever done that before because I've always... I basically never get the Daybreak on Zenith Blade. <laughs> I just... I always... Like, I never get that Daybreak ability. That's the first time that's that's happened for me. Okay, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Well, that's good, just getting the Zenith Blades out of the deck. You know, reduce the size of the deck, make it easier to draw, um, you know, whatever unit we're buffing up with Starlet Seer. Because we have definitely had, like, both Zenith Blades, and then we just naturally draw the third, and that's yeah, always a feels bad. Now we don't have to worry about naturally drawing oh, the third. Still see far and clear. We do have to worry about their champions. That are very good. These gems grant aware of common. All right, gonna make this gift giver a three three so that Flea Feather Tracker can't kill it, and we can have it block Yordle Grifter. Okay, that card is awesome against the cha the champions. Of course, it's pretty good against Cutthroat also, but, you know, if they have, like, Sejuani with Overwhelm and Gangplank with Overwhelm that are really big. So we're going to be saving this Hush Boys. for that. Double for the next kill. You won't feel it at first. This is not the way. Really have the room. For shards of the mountain. Um I'm not gonna be beholding a celestial car, but I I would really love having supernova. So Scourge and Great Beyond, those are our two. I'll just take the Scourge. This will be a good winter. Up there in the mountains. Who's on top of the bounty board today? So we're at five out of seven. not gonna let's see so if we play shards of the mountain i have five mana i use two shards puts me down to three mana doesn't sound too bad it's time to shine We still haven't drawn whatever unit that we are buffing. We've been just drawing some spells. Um, our last what, three draws were Hush, Shards, Shards. We're going to have some unit that's going to be pretty buff from the Starless Year. No They're going to have a bunch of Champions and or Riptide Rex Sisses. To get, I need Tarek to level up first before attacking. So we need to cast Elixir of Iron first. Oh, but then I can't play it on the Taric because of the Zenith Blade. I want the Zenith Blade over here. I guess we're playing it over here. This will be a good. There is nowhere left 
Because I, I definitely want to make it so they don't take damage this round. Never submit. Blessed by snow and stars. <laughs> Not my first gun fight. Still going to be really difficult to defeat their hand filled with Gangplank, Sejuani, and Riptide Rex. I got a lot of all of those. And it's going to be difficult to defeat those. That thing's pretty big. We got another Overwhelm left. Just going to It's gonna hush the Tarek so they don't get to um don't get to challenge Tarek. Do wish this arbiter was a seven six. Okay, they're all frostbitten. Well, I need a block block. I have decided. Yeah, they're just gonna keep frostbiting my stuff every turn. I mean, I could, I, yeah, I guess I could have hushed Sejuani first. Go down to four? We can't really go down to four. Your journey ends. Oh, my hush is gonna be gone. Can we get one more point of damage against the Sejuani somehow? One more point of damage. Not exactly sure how. I guess that means I'm lost in, ref in reflection. Shatter them. Safeguard our homes. Unyielding. Why did that not... How did we not do any Nexus damage? With that Overwhelm on the 3-3. I'm not, I'm not really sure why we didn't do any Nexus damage there. I don't think we did. Blessed by snow and stars. Oh, and a 
suspicious season. Yep, hoping to stop that hush. First loss to Bilgewater with this deck. First loss to Bilgewater. I may have been a little hasty with that hush. Maybe. That's kind of a match where we actually didn't really have our units, right? Like we we did in the in the mid game there, you know, drawing hush shards of the mountain, shards of the mountain was a little awkward, especially with the shards of the mountain just didn't really have time for them. Um, I think if we go back and, and replay that, I probably could have re better sequenced and also could have blocked could have been a little bit more aggressive in combat both attacking and blocking um didn't really get any use out of my elixir of iron and i could have earlier you know killing stuff and and things like that so i think i kind of played that too timidly that last game but there we go there's Tarek brahm definitely a ton of fun try to dodge hush if you can that's what I'd recommend. I don't know if there's like a real good, efficient Sejuani killer, uh, especially how leveled up Sejuani is a 6-7. Uh, I remember that last time we were able to overcome a leveled up Sejuani for tons of turns with the deck, but it was a big pain. Um, yeah, that, that Frostbite your team burst speed with, with uh, warning shots. That's a huge pain to try to deal with um, in combat both ways. Um, but, uh, yeah, there we go. So that's Tarek Brom. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.